going on everybody welcome back to another episode out here on the course and guys i'm excited the off season is over it is now in season tournaments are two and a half weeks away i'm so excited cannot wait to get out there and just start really start playing but with that being said there are some significant adjustments that have to be made based on some of the progress that was made this off season so without further ado i'm excited to announce the new series unveiled on this channel, starting with this episode, is the Rebuild My Bag series. Let's get it. You're like, Gabe, what is this Rebuild My Bag series? You've changed your club so many times. What's going on? Why is this happening? Well, here's what went down. All right, I'm going to talk and play as we go because I know you guys want to see more golf. And I want to play more golf. So uh, I'm currently one under through nine holes. This is the tenth hole here. Um, wasn't planning on filming this, but here we go. So my guys over at Titan Golf in Surrey, who initially got me set up with the Autoflex, have been great to work with while I've been out here in the Lower Mainland. Went over to their shop to film some content, and initially it was going to be a ball comparison video, and just wanted to get some different spin rates to see, you know, which ball I should be playing. Now that the weather's warmer, I thought, you know, I could make some cool content, show you guys the differences in balls, and this is when I was... You know, I was going to do a Chrome Soft versus Chrome Soft X versus Chrome Soft XLS video because I was trying to figure out what Callaway product I should use. Well, in the midst of doing that, Taylor, who leads the fitting over there, um, proceeded to completely laugh at my GC quad numbers with my 7 iron specifically because I was swinging it between 100 and 104 miles per hour and spinning it completely off the planet. I think my peak height was like 150 feet or more at one point. Here, here's a clip of him chewing me out for absolutely roasting my 7 iron. So as you can see, pretty funny. Um, and Taylor has been great to work with and those guys have been awesome over at Titan. So it obviously, from him seeing that, it generated a bit of a conversation and they know my goals and what I'm trying to achieve. And so we've got to come to this cool little partnership that I'm going to unveil with this Rebuild the Bag series. And so I've, I've partnered with them to now go through my bag and we're going to kind of reassess all my gear. Now you're going, I get it, Gabe. You got fit with TXG, then you got rid of all those clubs, and then you had to get new clubs, and now you're getting new clubs again. I understand. And I have, and I can explain this on the whole process. Now that whole trajectory, you know, I, I get it, but it's not as... I guess it's not as weird for me because again, for those of you who've been following me through my journey, right? I've been modeling my journey in golf around how I progressed in music, right? So it took me three years to go from nothing to working on a platinum record with Shawn Mendes. So right now I'm one year into that three year execution, right? And so in doing that execution, I kept refining my tools and refining my tools and getting to a point where I would max out my tools and have to upgrade my tools or change my tools based on evolutions in my skill set and my taste. Now I've got it to a point where because of all the hard work I've done this off season, I've really improved my strength, my swing, and all the things I need to actually now take advantage of better gear. All right, this next one's a par five. We have the advantage here of being elevated, so our tee shot's gonna go a little further, and uh, we're just gonna 
Did a nice, nice cut out there. And as tools evolve and as your skills evolve, it's exciting to be able to put that into play. You know, the reason why I had to make the gear changes six months ago was because I wasn't good enough. And the gear that I had been set up with initially was based on a swing that wasn't good enough. And so I had to kind of almost start from scratch again to rebuild myself, rebuild my game, to find what will be optimal so that I can achieve this crazy goal of mine. And what I want to kind of show through this experience and what I've learned is that hopefully I can kind of demystify a lot of the gear purchasing experience. Because again, going through this for the past year, I've learned a ton about the role gear plays in golf. And I think there's a lot of misinformation out there. I think there's a lot of things we do as golfers um, that hurt us when it comes to gear. And I think there's some stuff we can do that helps us. And a big thing I want to do is help you guys, you know, save money and not let your money on fire by spending it on the wrong things. So if I can kind of do all that throughout this process, that'd be a huge win for me. And then I want to come out of this, obviously, with a bag that I am so pumped about and is ready to dominate in competition. So that last iron shot's a perfect example of like the ball ballooning on me, right? That was 155 yards. It was a bit into the wind, but with my speed, there's no reason that should come up that short, right? And, and so I just know that there's some inherent flaws in what I'm using based off of my current capabilities. Anyway, okay, so the first item on the docket in the Rebuild My Bag series is the driver. Now, up to this point, you guys have seen me, I play the Maverick Sub-Zero, uh, with the Autoflex. And I've experimented with the Autoflex 505X, the 505XX. I've also experimented with using a Callaway long drive head. Now, the reason why I made those decisions at the time and the reason why I set up my bag like that is that initially when I went through the off-season training and rebuilt my swing, I was preparing myself to compete back in Ontario. And with all the courses and the way they're set up and the way I know how to play a lot of those, a lot of that style of golf, I was setting up for this big power draw. I was working out and setting up my swing. And if you saw any of my videos and on my swing speed training, you know, I was trying to model a bit of the Bryson thing and just hit these power draws. And I got to a point where, where I could do it. And, you know, especially with the long drive head, I took it out to Royalwood, which is a big course here. That's kind of similar to how courses are set up back home. And you know, it's, it's, it's wide open and you can just let it fly and And it was great. And I hit it like crazy. But a big wrench that got thrown into everything is that, you know, now that I got to camp out here for a little longer before I go back home, I'm competing in tournaments here. Well, the courses here are much tighter. They're so much tighter. This course in particular, and you'll see, you know, parts of it here, and I'm going to do a full course vlog properly coming. You know, this is one of the tightest courses I've ever played. And a lot of the courses around here are like this because everything's cut through the trees. And so as a result, it's a ton of target golf and me trying to sling these high launching like crazy draws just brings in a ton more risk than I need. And what really illuminated this for me was when I played with my coach, Max, you know, he's an incredible golfer and I'm so lucky I get to play with him and watching these good players, you know, he, he kind of spoiled it for me in a sense. Like I see him lace this power fade out there that is so controlled and it's just everything I want out of a golf shot. It's just exactly what I want. And so when talking with Taylor and, and Taylor was instrumental in me getting the autoflex in the first place, he was in that first video and, and you know, they helped me dial in my autoflex to a point where I would, could hit it stupid far with stupid swing speeds and it was working. And that setup to me was, is still my favorite setup. If I wasn't trying to compete in tournaments, if I wasn't trying to, you know, turn pro, I would probably just stick with that driver. That driver is amazing. Like, 
The 505X with the MAV Sub-Zero, it's a little whippier than the 505XX, but that setup that I had is fun. It's so much fun. I can hit it both ways. I can hit it high. I can just absolutely do whatever I want. And the, the ball just absolutely flies. So if, if I'm a, a casual golfer, if I'm just trying to break 80, if I'm just doing whatever, playing with the buddies and or playing in scramble tournaments and whatever, then 100%, I just stick with the Maverick because it works. It's a lot of fun. And I love, I love the Autoflex. I, I, this is not, this is not a demerit point against the Autoflex. This is just a change in tactics. up a little more work than I needed to on that one. And the tactic change is simple. It's, I'm a big believer, and you've heard me talk about this before, in playing only one shot shape. And for me, it's pretty much exclusively one shot shape throughout the bag. Now, I've been going back and forth between the draw and the fade, trying to sort out what exactly would be the optimal swing and shot shape for me to score and play the best in a competitive setting. And as much as I love that high power draw, it's just not a tournament shot for me. And so as a result, it makes the Maverick with the Autoflex a tough, a tough club for me because the Maverick specifically is a tough head to hit a fade with for me. For some reason, the way the face angle is, no matter how I set the loft or set the, I even have one of the tour sleeves, it, it just doesn't matter. You know, between that and even the long drive head, there's just, it just doesn't work with my swing in particular, with how I like to hit a fade, um, I find I just would get these absurd left misses that are just so penalizing uh, and unnecessary. So I brought all this to Taylor and I said, okay, listen, if we're gonna do this, then here's where we're starting. Immediately, the biggest issue I have in my bag is that I only want this ball to go left to right. I do not want it to go left and stay left or just hook it all i do not ever want to hit a draw i want the auto fade driver what do you have that is just an automatic fade off the tee every single time So here's a little clip of me and Taylor in the hitting bay working on the auto fade driver. So this is the, please don't ever go left, ever, please. Don't go left, please. Ever. Ever, please. Yeah, you can't draw this, you can only put it. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Tap fade, slice, and tough shows is going to take the off. Yep. Beautiful, right? That is. Yeah. This is the this is the setup for you. If you want to play high level golf, yeah. you want to be in the fairway. This is what you need. Yeah. You need a Ventus Six X and a Ping LSP Nine. Yeah. That's, wow. Yeah. Like you, 
hit the last one high and out of the toe, and you didn't hook it or draw it. Like even this one. Exactly. That's still 300 oh. yards with a baby cut. Cause I like, oh dude, you have no idea how much like I lose sleep at night knowing I'm gonna go left with my dagger. <laughs> you know what I mean? No, I don't. Oh, not at all. I lose sleep. Oh man, I don't. Well, that's the thing. Dude, my girl, uh, I'll be talking to my girlfriend on the couch and I'll be like, she's like, how'd it go today? I'll be like, babe, <laughs> everything's really good, but my driver just goes left. <laughs> Let, yeah, just let me get you over there. Don't worry about it. You can't keep your head there. You gotta change your head. No, that's what I'm saying though. It, it's gotta be. I know. I like. I love how far I can hit the cowl. Yeah. On the days when I'm on, I can hit that so dumb. Yeah. And if the course is wide open, like yeah, when I play Royal Wood, when I play these wide open courses, it's fine. Yeah. The problem exactly. is. Yeah. And. And the reason why I went with Callaway too is back home, the tournaments I was going to play, courses are more open. Mm -hmm. But here, all the tournaments, Tree it's, it's so no. pit meadows, it's all these tight, Yeah, yeah, you know? it's, it's targety out here. So it's I got to play hard. like, I got to play these, these cuts like this. Okay, that's enough. No, not really. But that's what I'm saying. It's a fairway. That's a bad strike. Yeah. And it's and right there. Exactly. You're a you're a feely little chip on here. Okay, let's uh let's put you on a different hole here. Let's give you something a little more challenging. Mm. There it is. There you go. First try, eh? I'm not getting the absurd distances I've gotten. No, but again, like 119 club head speed, I'm still spinning it like crazy, right? Yeah, that's a big cut. Though, yeah. Cool. Yeah, that's perfect. That's my like bullet. My low bullet. All right. Now, from a GC quad perspective, you know, the numbers coming off this aren't necessarily the most impressive, right? I don't swing it as fast. I don't put up as crazy ball speeds. And as a result, I'm not crushing it as far. But where it comes into play, and I think this is the important part of fitting that kind of gets glossed over or doesn't really get taken into account as often as I would like is whatever you do inside GC Quad is almost irrelevant, right? And this is a trap I fell into as well. It's great to chase numbers and it's great to chase those speeds and it's great to, you know, really go after those target goals. I'm all for it, right? But there is nothing like having to hit a drive into an actual fairway. You have water left, you have trees and houses right. The landing area is not that wide, okay? And when you have to hit that, I could not care less what my ball speed number is. I don't care about any of those metrics. All I care about is do I have the confidence in what I'm using to absolutely crush it to my target. That's been an interesting journey for me throughout all this because I definitely went through the other path where I was just chasing numbers and trying to get max swing speed, max distance, max ball speed. And I thought, you know, by just chasing those numbers and getting the speed up, it'll just all kind of sort itself out. But in practice, it's just not the same. You know, you sometimes need something where you don't have to swing out of your shoes and you can be confident that you're gonna hit your target. I think this is like one of the longest drives I've ever hit on this hole. I think last time when I showed you guys this hole on a previous video, I think I was like over there. So this is probably like five, maybe 10 yards further of it. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's a good way to show uh, show that the driver works. Roast one. Well, that wet shot came out a little hot. That wasn't ideal. Uh, definitely not the way we want to capitalize on a big drive like that. Um, hold on. Let's just get up and down, and then I'll get back to you about the driver.
Now for the limited time that I've had it, which has been three days, uh, it has been really, really great and really, really refreshing to just hit a different driver. So first of all, the look, it's phenomenal. This blacked out look is so sweet. Um, one thing in particular that's really cool is actually, I played it for two days with the stock shaft before the Ventus came in and it's good. Like the stock shaft that it comes with is good. And I was hitting it great with that stock shaft. So for those of you that may not have the budget, like one, what I love about Ping 2 is they come up with a new driver like every two years. So I know that putting this in the bag, I can be confident that this is gonna be something I can game and I can own for the next two seasons because this is still brand new. So that's nice knowing. Um, and you know, it's nice to know too that they put a lot of effort into their stock shafts and the stock shaft's great. The reason why we went, you know, obviously upgraded the shaft is just to get that extra layer of stability and the extra layer of low launch, low spin. Because the other issue I'm having that was never a problem is that I used to be a very low spin player. I played the Bridgestone BXS basically all last summer because I'm a low spin player. I can play a high spin ball. I can't do that anymore. You know, with my seven iron alone, I'm generating 2000 more RPMs of spin with my seven iron right now than I was at this time last year, right? And so with the driver, I'm having the same issue. If I, if I, because of my speeds now, and because of just how I swing, I'm generating a lot more spin. And so as a result, going with the Ventus Black 6X um, standard length. So I'm not playing this at uh, a longer length like I was playing with the, the Autoflex. This is playing at just standard length. This combination with, uh, right now I'm experimenting with putting the weight in fade or in neutral. I had it in neutral, but I think for the extra protection, I'm putting it in fade right now just to see if it helps. Um, and obviously, you know, not really having an issue hitting the center. And again, going back to tactics, I only want to hit a fade. I never want to hit a draw. If I need to hit a draw off the tee, I'll use something else because there's just no need to work the driver both ways. There just isn't, okay? It creates more issues and there's math to back that up, which I will get into in another video, but you just don't need to ever hit the driver both ways. If you're hitting the driver both ways, you're just causing issues for yourself. You just don't, it's just a fact. This setup is entirely based on eliminating anything going left at all. I want it to start left and go right all day, every day without thinking, which is great because on holes like this, like this part five, I've really struggled to hit this fairway. This hole is 602 yards long. And let me tell you, it has been a bear to deal with because it usually plays into the wind. And to be honest, it has been a struggle to hit this fairway or keep the ball in play sometimes with the auto flex. I'll give you a little preview of the next episode and absolutely try and roast this green wood. A little left. Oh, what a kick. What a kick. That played out exactly how I'd like. Just hit my shot shape and not even have to think about it. And so then designing the tool with that in mind so that the shot I'm hitting and my tool are in alignment, well then when I step on the tee box, I just don't have to deal with the thought that it could go left. And the mental stress of that is a lot when you try and get to a, com a competitive level, right? Like, again, I, I reiterate, if I wasn't trying to turn pro or have this outrageous golf goal of, of improvement, I wouldn't probably go down this path this aggressively. I've spent enough money on gear. I can hit it well enough. I can put up some good scores and play good with my buddies. And that's all I need. And so I wouldn't have probably investigated this had I had the desire to do more. But now that I've tried it, it is interesting because having a tool that is so stable and 
serves one purpose and does that one purpose really well, it's, it's cool to use. It's a cool feeling. Ooh, we got lucky with that one. <laughs> Ooh, just stayed in. And that's that ping forgiveness you pay for because even when you do screw up and you hit it left because you suck, it doesn't go so far left that it's out of play. All right, uh, I think we can still reach this in two. Uh, it's par five. So uh, we're just waiting for the green to clear and then we are going to send one right at this pin. All right, we got 211. It's right over this tree to the pin. We're gonna try and roast the four iron and uh, see if we can make something happen. Oh yeah. I didn't see it land, but it should be good. Just a little short in between those bunkers. Still a good look at the pin. Yeah, see right there, in between the bunkers. All right, that's a good shot. Now, I know this video is a little all over the place and I will refine it as we go along on this series, but I think I just want to stress the importance throughout this build a bag series as we experiment with gear. You know, obviously the ping is the driver for now. I'm 90% sure that's the driver we're going to settle on. It could change. It could not, but all signs point to go. But what I want to show you throughout this series is, you know, how I evaluate gear, the reasons why I make those decisions, and then putting that gear to test in a practical setting and seeing how it performs under game conditions. Because at the end of the day, that's all that matters. As much as I would love to be a hero in the simulator and on the range, I just don't care. It just doesn't matter. All that matters is what does it do for you out here. And I wanna be able to show you guys that as I get fit for things, I'm gonna obviously show you some of the data, but then be able to bring it out to the course and show you if it lives up to what I think it should do out here where it matters. Because again, from a data perspective, the ping was not impressive on the quad. Ball speed numbers were down by like five miles per hour. You know, the fastest I swung it, I think in there was like 121. Cause again, I'm also not trying to swing out of my shoes anymore. I'm trying to play it a little differently. I'm trying to play a much more controlled shot. So all those play a factor, but what do I care about? I care about the fact that I can bring it out here before under right now. And that's from putting the ball in play. And if you saw my course vlog, uh, course vlog 21, where I hit under par for the first time, if you saw that, that vlog, a big reason why I shot so low is because I just hit a controlled fade out there all day. Now that fade didn't go as far because the problem I was having with the Sim Max is that it was spinning like crazy, right? So what's, you know, that's why I had to move on from that club is because the spin off it was just stupid. I was, those drives were going like 276, 286, which based on what I can do just doesn't work. But the key thing I took away from looking back at why I played so well is that, and, and looking back at my Arcos data, the rounds that I am positive strokes gain driving because I'm bombing it, I don't go as low. I don't know why. If I just put myself in the fairway and give myself shots at the green, I have a much better chance of making birdies based on how I play than the days that I'm swinging out of my shoes and going for it. I don't know why that I have that discrepancy, but that's just how I play. And my Autoflex course vlog, when I played uh, Royal Wood and shot six under, which is still my career best, or I only swung out of my shoes on like two of the holes. Like I, I was just trying to hit these little controlled drives. And so now that I'm stronger, I can hit those controlled drives with more speed, which now lends itself well to having the ping and being able to hit these 300 yard cuts that, you know, in the case of hole 15 here, went really far and, you know, into the wind here, that still went a good distance. So I really have no complaints. That's just, again, from a tactical perspective and learning about my game and spending so much time over the past year, just understanding like what makes me good, what will make me good? How do I play my best? And for me, 
putting the ball in the fairway and driving it well just breeds so much confidence that I'm okay with not being the longest guy out there, but I'd rather just be in play and always have a shot in if I can. That to me puts me in the best headspace to win. What a good way to kick off the series. Guys, thank you so much for joining me. Uh, just shot a nice smooth 67 here. I was one under on the front when we joined me and was three under on the back. What a great way to start the series. Uh, I definitely think the first new addition to the bag really works. Excited to get through the other additions to the bag as we go through them. I will keep you guys involved through this entire process. Uh, thank you so much for joining me. I, I hope you guys enjoyed this video. I included some golf in it. I know you guys get tired of me talking all the time. So hopefully me mixing in some golf, let you guys in on, you know, a lot of the hard work I've been doing. I'm really excited where the game is. And you know, there's still, still a lot more I can tighten. And so we are going to tighten this up uh, through this rebuild the bag series with my boys at Titan Golf. And I'm really excited to just continue on this path because everything is heading in the right direction. So thank you guys so much for watching. Please like and subscribe if you haven't already. Join me on my journey to get to a plus six. I'm going to add this to my Golf Canada app right as soon as I get home. So uh, I don't know where the handicap will be, but I'll have a handicap update video coming soon. But yeah, join me on my journey to get to a plus six this year and turn professional. And I will catch you on the next one.